I told myself I was better than this. I said, self, you're better than this. You're better than dumb references. No, I'm not. It's hammer time. Мої родичі прийшли з України. Я є українець. Я стою з Україною. I've been staying up late at night trying to help where I can and figure out what I can do. And so I figured I'd save a little bit of time and try a, this old Tony trick on making the motor mount here. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it actually works. Okay, obviously that's a cheesy trick, but you get the idea. So this is the motor mount for the sledgehammer. Uh, it took me like a week of evenings just to machine this part out. You know, I've got a very small mill. It's not the size of the mill. Well, in this case it kind of is. It takes a while. So I put a polish on it because it's the quickest, easiest way to get a decent finish on something. It's not a show quality finish by any stretch, but you know what? It's good enough. The whole thing is to make it look pretty for the camera. And besides which, if I make everything too pretty, well, honestly, it just increases the likelihood that the thing's not going to work. So let's put the sledgehammer together. So this is a uh, Vortec. Now it's an SI trim with a John Bond billet impeller. Uh, it has, it's really nice and smooth. It no longer has a gear train. I've removed the gear train. Uh, the input shaft used to be up here. Uh, you can see a 10 millimeter bolt actually. And that's what drives it. That's threaded right into the back of the impeller shaft. The wave washers are in there. They're angular contact bearings. There you go. That's how the drive works. And incidentally, this is the drive from version one. It's just a modified hex socket that I turned down in a lathe, TIG welded on, a steel slug in the back, a couple of set screws. And it just engages this and it drives it. It turns out that this is the most reliable drive so far. It was the first drive I made and I made it purely out of convenience and to allow for some misalignment, but it's worked better than anything else so far. So let's put this thing together so you can see how it's assembled. All right, you have a stack of these aluminum discs. This is the motor mount plate and it's got bolt, bolt patterns for the TP power motor and now for the LMT motor. And this is the adapter plate and it all fits together very, very precisely. This is all machined, I, I, you know, with, as accurately as I can. So this just slips in here. There's no play in it at all. Line them up. It doesn't matter the orientation. The, the mounting holes are pretty well made. It, ta it takes a while to be this precise, particularly if you're not a machinist like me, you know, and don't have the greatest tooling in the world. You do the best you can. And you can do some pretty precise work, assuming you're careful. All right, so this is the subplate, if you will. And this motor plate also has a concentric lip on it. And that fits in nicely into there. But before we bolt that on, obviously, we have to bolt the motor together. So let's get this thing out of the way. Much like the original drive, this one is also a 10 millimeter hex drive. It's a similar concept, except this time I just used a actual impact socket and turned it down. <laughs> High speed steel doesn't touch this. This is, has to be done with carbide tooling. But it turned out very, very precisely. You know, I got a miniature boring bar. I bored out the shaft to the perfect size. I mean, this thing fits perfectly. There's a half a millimeter clearance between the bearing and the end of the shaft here. And you've got about a millimeter on this side before it bottoms out. So there's a little bit of room to play. And the beauty is it's a deep well socket, right? So if something happens and suddenly the impeller for whatever reason overspeeds, not that that's ever happened, uh, the bolt just unscrews and ends up living in here. Now what has happened is I've had sync problems before with two long motor cables, which is one of the reasons why this one has a posi position sensor on it. So that's gonna make it easier. So let's put the motor plate on. There you go. So I'm not sure if you can make that out, but it's a very, very precise fit. There's less than half a millimeter clearance 
around the impact socket, but there is no play in this thing, so I don't anticipate that being even slightly an issue. But you also saw me torque these bolts in very specific sequence. It's like you do the two insides and then you go diagonally opposite and then diagonally opposite. It's like doing an intake manifold on a car, basically. If you don't have a, a torque pattern, you always start from the inside and work your way outside. So there you go. Let's put this thing on the actual sledgehammer itself. Now here I gotta figure out where exactly I want the sensor to be. I don't want it pointed up, obviously, and this will be up. So I figure this is probably good enough. We're gonna end up reclocking the, the volute anyway. So now you just screw this down. And there you go. Because everything is such a precise fit, it just, it makes assembling it a piece of cake. And you can tell you got it right because you'll see the cooling fan spin when I spin the impeller by hand. Just make sure there's no binding anywhere. That's nice and smooth. All right, so obviously you can tell this thing is uh, rather long. So it requires a little bit of support. So I took care of that as well. Again, with the super time consuming bracket. It's going to end up going out of camera frame, so I'm just going to ask you to bear with me on that one. So these are, by the way, these holes in this Vortec bracket, everything on here is Imperial except for these holes. For whatever reason, Vortec in their infinite wisdom decided to make these an oddball metric size. It's like an M12 by 1.5 or 1.75, I forgot. So I ended up having to make adapters for just regular 5 16 coarse all thread. All shall become clear shortly. I even pre-marked the all thread for how far in it really needs to go with a green Sharpie mark there. I think ahead. So here at Alex Labs where the future is made today, I like to use the whole buffalo. Towards that end, when I bought my house, it came with a really craptastic electric weed whacker with a lead acid battery that lasted precisely, I don't know, six months. So I used the thin aluminum shaft to make these standoffs and then I machined plugs at the end just to you know locate everything and add some strength to it. The whole idea here is to keep it lightweight plus honestly drilling a hole that long through aluminum is a bit of a hassle. It gets gooey. There's one. Getting my fingerprints all over my carefully polished stuff. Now the coup de gras. That's a downside with polished aluminum. You even look at it funny and it develops a marking. So I did go a little bit nuts on the precision here. So this motor measures exactly 60 millimeters in diameter. The hole that I bored is 60.4 millimeters in diameter, and that's for a very specific reason. I really don't want to scratch up this motor. I actually measured the thickness of gaffer's tape. That's going to be my cushioning inside. Well, that was painful. So this is so precise of a fit that it actually kind of snaps on to the motor. Let's get this under the camera. I'm quite sure that's out of focus for you, but you know what, deal with it. So that presses on nicely. And now that it's located perfectly, by the way, now is the time to in fact, I'm going to angle this down a little bit so maybe at least one of the cameras can get it. I'm holding this down in the bottom to apply pressure to it because we want this to clamp on perfectly. It's 
So now we know we have a near perfect fit. I actually mark these caps like you would, you know, like a main cap or a rod cap to know the orientation and where they go. And once again, nice friction fit. You want to put some kind of lubricant on the threads, especially when you're threading into aluminum. It doesn't matter, whatever, you know. I'd use anti-seize, but that's in the garage. So this is just molly grease. But something is better than nothing. We'll keep it from galling and keep it from seizing up. And that is what we care about most. So we don't have to go super tight there, just enough to support it. She's a bit big for the shot. Let's spin it around. But that is 53 horsepower, Vortec SI trim. Spins nice and free. She's a thing of beauty. Hopefully this thing will let us hit eight to 850 horsepower. Now let's go make some cables and do some testing and testing should go smoothly I hope I don't see why this isn't gonna work we don't have to dial anything in this motor and the ESC are sold as a kit so come hell or high water we're going to the dyno in the track as soon as possible thanks for watching support Ukraine subscribe give me a like if you think it's worth it and I will catch you all on the next one